Hello everyone and welcome back to episode number two of the Aquatic Dome. Today with the Giant Otter Habitat. I call it the Giant Otter Challenge, so to say, and you will be knowing why in just a bit. But the, first of all, thank you so much for being with me again in this video. Today is going to be um, a very exciting one uh, simply because this is the first time we build a Giant Otter Habitat of this new pack and with this new pack. And this is going to be part two of the Aquatic Dome. So in case you haven't seen episode number one, I highly recommend this because all you need to know about this project and how this whole thing has been done and how it has been built um, is explained in the first episode. Um, it features no animal, so that's in fact the first animal of a many in this dome. Um, so just as a little reminder, we will make this dome uh, fully equipped with all the aquatic animals plus the saltwater crocodile simply because that one is also diving. Now, Let's talk about the design of this habitat. So this habitat is featuring three, well, actually four key elements. Um, the first one being a little bit of a zigzag um, course that is going above the waters. Um, that's where you come in. Then you're going to go down below through a tunnel that is guiding you from the right-hand side to the left-hand side of their pool. And when you are on the other side, you are greeted by a big underwater viewing gallery that gives you a wonderful view spot of the otters playing in the water. And so you can see, um, the whole ha habitat is basically just a gigantic stretched out donut. So in case if you would look from above, you would basically see like a roundish, uh, almost like a little track going around here. So this is one side where the otters can go into the water, they can swim all around to the other side, just climb out of the water, go into the shelter and then go all the way around this habitat again. So they are always in a constant loop. The reason why I did this is I have done an incredible amount of testing in this habitat before I built this. I don't know how many iterations of the of the general habitat design I made until I figured the perfect way of making them move. Because what you want to have is a lot of movement in the habitat just to make sure that you know the guests are also able to see the animals and at the same time, I wanted to make sure that this habitat maintains a little bit more lush because that's the that's still the South American area, still more the jungle area. You can see I'm making like a separation border over here between um, the two habitats because the other side of this water pond is going to be the Kuvir Cayman um, or Dwarf Cayman, I should say, um, is going to be on the other side. Uh, just a little side note, this is still work in progress because there is a lot of problems still occurring. Uh, it seems that the animals, like especially the diving animals, can still dive through a few pieces. Not all. Um, some pieces seem to be solid to them. Um, for example, rocks and stuff like that. And also like, uh, you know, grid pieces and walls. They seem to work fine. But stuff like, for example, glass panels and also some other, I think the simple art shapes and stuff. They basically just ignore them and swim through it. Uh, so even though they cannot escape, they can escape. If you know what I mean? So it's always a little bit, bit, you know, problematic. And then this part of what I'm doing over here, which is uh, kind of overgrown, is guiding into the saltwater crocodile habitat. This is in fact the last one we are doing, just as a hand, uh, heads up here. Um, this is just sitting to the left hand side. But you can already tell, um, this is just doing a little bit of groundwork here, just to make sure that I have a certain idea until where the habitat stretches out and just finding a few new pieces. So this was very early on when I had the aquatic DLC. Um, I think the first day I spent only testing and then the second day I spent building the dome and uh, this was then legit the first habitat I built in the evening. Now, now this was really, I wanted to test a lot of pieces. I wanted to just get in, um, get my hands on it, just make sure that I figure a way how to how to do all of that. And you have seen last episode, I've, I've struggled a lot with the pathing. So what I did over here just to make my life a little bit easy, um, I just pulled off the little path, um, just how wide it is. And then I started to build the tunnel design outside of the dome, just to give me a bit more you know, space to, to look at things and stuff like that. But I wanted to make this dome, uh, this um, tunnel really fit into this story quite well, because this is in fact where you go into the middle of the dome in the lower part of the dome. So you will be enclosed the whole time. This is the tunnel that guides you into the underwater world, so you, uh, so to say. So you're coming from the outside, go through the jungle, and then you go down into the underwater world. And this is the entrance to it. So I wanted to make it special um, in terms of having really that kind of tunnel vibe to it and at the same time keeping it very 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 open and and bright which happens by having these glass panels and I know basically everyone is using these glass panels but these are legit the only big roundish ones that are not really disturbed by many pieces um, that's the reason why we're using them 
Um, fun part, you have seen I used the mechanic just as a little guidance how high this can be or how tall. And I love the fact that you can be very nice and um, tight with this piece because simply it is kind of big. It has like, I think it's like in the middle and center of it, it has like 2.8 meters of height, which is already pretty insane. You can even sink that into ground and making that look still very nice. Um, you know, while the piece itself is just very big, but I think it's very nice that, you know, the people do not go head banging against the glass with their heads and since they keep mostly to the center of the path anyways it looks always pretty pretty damn nice but yeah so this was the first part for me and uh, one of the most uh, you know uh, tricky parts there are a lot of cuts in this video guys i'm i'm very sorry about this um some things just didn't work out the way i wanted it to do to work out and then i just you know i just did a lot of uh, fixing a lot of testing but we will have a real-time part at the end so don't you worry you will see also basically quite a lot more into the entire dome build i hope that i'm not going to spoil too much but you will be seeing quite a lot already from the new stuff i've i've done over the car past couple days um, which will be released now one by the other in the next coming days for you but um, yeah just in general I'm a I'm a huge I'm a huge fan of how this turned out like the, this is just like very nice opening habitat um, if you go in here the only habitat that you will see before that one is uh, parts of the Cayman habitat not all of it but just parts and then you come into this and I I, I just incredibly love that one because it just I don't know it just has exactly the vibes I wanted to give it. And this sounds rather simple and rather obvious, but it isn't because, you know, you have some stuff in your head, but translating that into an actual zoo uh, and, and just into a game with limited, well, limited is kind of a weird word in, in, in this sense, but it is limited in a way um, how you can do things. And my mind is not limited and this is always kind of hard to bring together um, so what I mostly do is I start very big very bold and then I have to shift down step by step um, and just figuring out where the limits of the game are and then I you know I try to go from there and this habitat over here made me so much ha more happy than usual because I didn't need to go back that much I just didn't I, I just could do it exactly the way I wanted it there are a few little things I would have loved to do more uh, tight for example there are a few more things I would have loved to do a bit more different for example this uh, pathway um, over the water I would have loved to use the two meter path this is now a three meter path I would have loved to use the two meter path but even the three meter path is already cause, uh, causing some insane traffic jams so I'm really looking forward to fixing that a bit more but I think it you know it fixes it itself naturally once people start to uh, walk through the entire area a bit nicer because there are more animals at this point there's only the otter and so obviously people just stay over here to see the otter and I really hope that in the future they don't do this and they just you know walk over into the next areas because there will be seals, there will be penguins, there will be saltwater crocodile um, and you know just in general a lot more animals but you can see already um, we are getting a little bit more forward um, uh, and now I think this was the part where I figured most of the things out and most of the things worked you can see I already have the feeder in which is going to be hidden away now uh, just to make sure that you know it, it is not the ugly feeder over there I just took some rock pieces from the new wonderful fake rocks and then you can use them I don't even know why they call them fake rocks for me these are rocks you know you don't notice in the game if it's plastic or not or like you know artificial or not they just look like rocks so they are rocks for me I mean it makes sense that they say they are fake rocks because you want to put them into the water without making the water get poisoned or whatnot so these are fake rocks okay I get it but it just doesn't change a thing for us, does it? I mean, it's just a rock. You can use it as a rock and, well, we are all happy because it's a rock. Anyways, don't drink uh, whenever I say rock because that makes you uh, pretty much drunk in 10 seconds now. Uh, but yeah, I just continued uh, playing around with a few things over here and then I, I figured I wanted to have like an otter slide, okay? Because the otters love to play in water and shallow water as well. So I figured, okay, there needs to be something that is... Yeah, um, paying tribute to the fact that they do love to play. So I built this wonderful slide over here, started to cover it up a bit more nice. And yes, they can walk up there and no, they don't use it that much. But still, I like to have it in the habitat. And eventually, maybe in the future, they start using it. Uh, but yeah, so the outside part was um, really needed because this habitat overall is just meeting the requirements of land space for them, which is just 
very odd to, to think about because it is very, very big in terms of overall size. But since, um, since I, what was that pronunciation though? Um, since I just made this very intricate and used a lot of pieces and, and nature and stuff and having paths go through and having the underwater gallery and stuff, it, it just made the whole navigatable area very, very narrow and tight. And I think this is mainly the reason why this habitat seems to be rather small. It isn't, I, I promise, it isn't small, it's rather big, but yeah, it just didn't work out the way I wanted it to, but whatever, at the end, um, I met the requirements even, and you know, in Sandbox you don't need to, but I'm planning to release this as a blueprint that you guys can also use in Franchise, so yeah, I wanted to fix it, <laughs> and I fixed it in the end, so be proud of me, okay? Be proud of me. Now, guys, we are moving on a little bit further into the um, well later part of the time lapse. And now, my question is, how do you like this this habitat so far? And please let me know in the comments down below what's your favorite part of this entire build, because we have, like as I said, three main focus points, which was one being the um, you know the above water outside viewing. Then we have the underwater tunnel, and then we also have the viewing gallery. You will see this a lot better now, uh, like later on in the. Um, in the real-time part, but just, just mentioning, this part over here is left in because reasons. Now, I wanted to keep you guys uh, out of this trouble. Don't ever delete all the terrain and build the habitat later. Build the habitat barriers before you do anything else. Because it was a pain, a real pain to kind of connect this habitat again. It, it's a insanely complicated design. I will at the very end of this project show you all the problems I had because it will be incredible, incredible um, to see that. It's just like, it, it looks like something very much broken, but it isn't and that, that's a great thing. But yeah, so the last part we are witnessing right now is building the um, railing over here. And as I said, this is already pretty late in the project. I, In fact, I did this today after like I think all aquatic animal habitats are already done at this point in time. Um, so yeah, this is already quite far in. But I just love to, um, you know, keep that in because um, I forgot the railing for most of the time. You can see already how cramped this area is. There's a little, little peak to the right hand side. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I managed quite well to not show you too much. Uh, if you do, well, this is just a little spoiler for you. Um, but yeah, so I, I just also wanted to have like another ground pattern over here. I used the new wooden pieces from the uh, aquatic pack because I just love the wooden pattern. I just love it. It's great. It's not as weathered as the one of the pathway, but it's also not as shiny, new and bright as the other type of path we have. So I'm just very happy about the pieces. I'm just, in, in general, I love the new pieces of the pack. They are just freaking insane. I gotta say, they just are freaking insane. Um, but yeah, so guys, um, just as a little uh, quick yes or no thing, or basically it's like a more, no, it's not yes or no, it's basically black or white. What is your favorite area? Is it more like the Arctic ice stuff or is it South America, jungle, rainforest? What, what would you be more excited for when you go to an area like that, which is divided into both of these things? Um, that's something I'm really interested in to know. Um, for me personally, I think it would be still jungle to be honest because warm and swampy and stuff I, I think I just you know is a bit more nice for me but I don't know it's just like a personal preference however this is it with the time lapse and now enjoy the real time part I promise it's very great so stick with me and enjoy my real time self in just a few seconds I guess yeah we are just getting closer now enjoy Hello everyone, and here we are in the real-time part. I will try to keep it a little relatively short and also be careful because in uh, this save file there's also like a lot more done than um, only this habitat. So um, I will quickly show you how it looks from above. You can actually see this is where the um, above area or the, let's say, the layered area um, higher up in this dome is having a view inside the other habitat. You can see this is like a bit more of a jungle. This is a railing over here we built just at the end. And then you can have a very nice glimpse. There's just one otter lying over here. Otterly cute, I would say. And then this bridge design over here will quite change um, towards the end. Uh, there's a lot I want to do. We have like a little stuff going on here. Look at that. All these otters swimming down here. I have quite a few in here um, just to make sure that we have a lot of movement going on. Um, I'm not really sure how many of them live together. I think it's just two actually. Uh, but since there's a sandbox, I can obviously have a bit more just to make sure that we have a bit more 
going on on these screenshots. So yeah, um, then we go down here and in here this is basically the underwater viewing and I, I just I just love it. I mean, just look at that. Just look at this viewing gallery. Just look how it works. Just look how they, they used to swim over here. Oh my god, this one is just turning funnily around. So that is all pretty, pretty dang cool. And then if we go around the corner, you can see this is the underwater tunnel from where you can actually also see and spectate the otters. There you go, or spectate, I should say. Um, there's a little feeder hidden in here. It actually works, so um, it's just hidden. So, you know, it's not always uh, visible to you that there's this ugly little feeder. So it's kind of hidden in the uh, in the rock. Look at that. They're just coming over for us here. Uh, just turning around, back around, going for a swim. Yeah, they basically always go here. I will definitely make sure that there's a bit more space for them to use this area a bit nicer um, and then you can go all the way up here and I'm just going to turn to the left now to the outside um, this is the outside part of the habitat I'm also like a big fan of it because it looks very nice and you can see since the otters have enough space <laughs> they do actually also dive in this area um, however they just kind of go into the water sometimes um, I haven't really figured out how to avoid this because they still use this area to dive as well um, it looks kind of cool when they do this here in low water um, but I think I made it a little bit too low I guess but it looks kind of cool to have them really use it as a diving opportunity still even though it's like super shallow I didn't think they do but since they have overall the requirements met I think they still do the swimming in here and it looks absolutely gorgeous I mean it looks you know kind of kind of cool it always looks like very funky if you have it in this type of water that looks very cool like, I mean, I didn't know that this is also working this well. Um, I mean, you can see they bug inside, but I'd rather have it this way with a few bugs inside of the terrain, to be honest, rather than not having them dive in this water and just like kind of, a, I don't know, do other stuff. I mean, we could just make it like a little bit less shallow and that should then be good. I don't know. But yeah, you can actually tell this is how the design of the habitat works. So basically it is just like a circle. They can go have a little bit of fun with their slide over here. And basically they can use it they barely do but they can use the slide um they have like a little tunnel to go through under this little log and then they have like this connection over here to the other side i'm not moving too much more because you can see there in the background there is already something i don't want to spoil this because it's very special um coming for you in the next couple of days are you playing together just to show me some animations you're not right okay you're not or are you no, you're just doing some weird stuff. Okay, anyway, so this is the habitat. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can actually see this. By the way, this is the tunnel design. I'm just, you know, put that to the side for the moment. Um, I think these weeping willow trees, they just really help a lot here um, to, to make this look very cool. And, you know, I'm really a big fan of this, this habitat, how it turned out with every little bit uh, integrated in the middle here. You, you have it a lot more jungle-ish. Outside, I would say it's, it's going to be a bit more European, um, but it could still be you know south america somehow so that's whoop, that's it and uh, this one is going to use it is it no it's not but yeah i'm a i'm a huge fan of of this stuff here guys and i hope you guys enjoyed this as well in case you did enjoy as always the little call to action if you are not subscribing yet to the channel it would be very awesome if you would do it because that helps me grow and maybe we can reach the 50k this year that would be ace um and yeah just in general um thank you guys so much for your support i really do appreciate that i really hope you guys stay safe and have a good time now enjoy your weekend and on to many more videos for this video weekend um, looking forward to seeing you again and talking to, to you again have a good time and goodbye guys